London and I'm on my way to India. And the Lord began to minister to me. The Lord began to speak to me about ministering healing to the body of Christ, the church. So I got my laptop and I began to write this sermon lesson that God gave me very close to heaven. I was flying like 30, 35,000 feet up in the air. So it's annoying to first God. <laughs> Amen. Father God, we come before your presence, God, and we love you. God, we praise you, God. We're just so honored, God, to be able, God, to serve you, Lord, to be called by your name, Jesus. I thank you, God, for what you're working. I thank you for what you are doing in our midst, God. And I thank you for the great plans that you have for this congregation. I give you praise, God. You are awesome. In Jesus' name, you may be seated in the presence of Almighty God. Amen. According to the reading of the Bible, the nation of Israel is God's chosen people. The Bible tells us that God selected Israel to be his people to be his nation from all the nations of this world. And it's interesting for us to note that, you see, whenever God is going to reveal his power, whenever God is going to be reveal his strength and his glory, God, the Bible tells us that he chooses the little things, the weak things, the things that are not. And he takes the little, and God miraculously works through the little, praise God. And the reason that God chose Israel, because see, they were a nation, but they were just so small. And God selected them that through Israel, God was going to show forth his strength, his power, and his glory to every nation in this world. Would somebody magnify the name of Jesus, praise God. Now, as his people, God made a covenant of healing with the nation of Israel. Would you say it with me? A covenant of healing. Would you say it again? A covenant of healing. A promise to heal them. Now, I, I want to ask you to open your Bible to Exodus, the book of Exodus chapter 15, and verse number 26. And the Lord is speaking to the nation of Israel, and God tells Israel in, the, in, in Exodus 15 and verse number 26, and said, if thou will diligent, diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep his statutes, <coughs> I will put none of these disease upon thee, somebody help me, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Now the very first thing that I want to bring <coughs> to your attention, listen, we need to stop giving the devil credit. It is God that brings forth sickness and disease. Hear me, it's not the devil. I told the church on Thursday, I'm tired of hearing even pastors talking about COVID and it's the devil. It's not the devil, it's God. Somebody say amen. Let me tell you something, listen, if the devil had that power, we wouldn't be here, praise God. Yes, amen. Somebody say, it's God. It's God. It's God. Somebody give Jesus praise. And the covenant that God makes with Israel 
If you hearken to my voice, listen, it's a condition. If you do what is right in my sight, if you hearken, if you pay attention to my word, if you obey my commandments, my statutes, sickness, disease that I have sent Israel, or I have sent Egypt, and, and we need to understand Egypt is a type of the world. And God is telling Israel, listen, the sickness, the disease that I have sent over to, to, to Egypt, listen, I will not send them upon you because I am your God, your healer. Somebody praise and magnify the name of Jesus. Now, I'm going to ask you to turn your Bible to Deuteronomy uh, chapter 30. And let's begin with verse number 19. Thank you, Brother Presley. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse number 19. Because see, listen, listen, when God created man, and, and, and when God selected the nation of Israel, listen, uh, you know, God doesn't create robots. God has put in every man, praise God, amen, God has put a will within us so that we can choose life or death. So that we can choose blessings or curse. Praise the Lord. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 30. And let's begin with verse number 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. So listen, God is choosing or God is, God is calling his creation. Heaven and earth as a testimony. And he's talking to the nation of Israel. And he's making Israel, listen, accountable before his creation be, between heaven and earth. And I want you to hear the word of the Lord. <laughs> that I have said before you, somebody say lie. And death. God is saying, I'm calling heaven and earth as a witness. That I am giving you a choice for you to choose life or to choose death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that thou, that both thou and thy seed may live. No, 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 listen, this is powerful. Listen, listen, you see, if I choose life, it's not just me, I've got children. I've got grandchildren. My decision, praise God, listen, it has a secondary effect. When somebody prays the name of Jesus. Amen. Verse number 20, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy, thy life, and the length of thy days that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swore unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, and to Jacob, to give. Praise God. Listen, God stands before the nation of Israel, and he calls heaven and earth as his witness. And he's telling Israel, choose life, choose death, choose blessings, choose a curse. It's up to you. And he's telling the nation of Israel, listen, listen, I counsel you, I recommend for you to choose life. Somebody praise the name of Jesus. Now let's go to the prophet Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah chapter number 8. The prophet Jeremiah chapter number 8 and, and, and verse number 20, 22. Now, now, now when Jeremiah, when, when, when he writes or when he speaks to the nation of Israel, listen, this is a time of calamity. This is a time, this is a dark hour over Israel. Because see, Israel was fascinated. They had drifted away from God. They had disobeyed the word of God. And I want you to notice the writing of, 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 of the prophet Jeremiah in, 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 in uh, Jeremiah chapter 8 and verse number, number 22. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Is there a doctor in the house? 
Is there any medicine in the house? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? What was the condition of the nation of Israel? Sickness. Because they had drifted away from God. Somebody praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Now the bomb that Jeremiah is referring to, it is an abstract or, or an, uh, an ointment from a plant found there in the region of, of Gilead. This, this plant... Uh, it was an abstract that was used as a healing ointment to heal many infirmities during the time of the prophet Jeremiah. However, listen, in this chapter, what Jeremiah is talking about, the pain and the sickness, it's, it's in reference to the sins of Israel. So what the prophet is saying, is there, a, is there an ointment? Is there a medicine that can bring healing to the nation of Israel? I praise God that that ointment today, praise God, it's the blood of Jesus. Oh, somebody magnify the name of Jesus, praise God. So we see that, that, that God selects the nation of Israel to be his people. And God makes a covenant with, with Israel. He makes a healing covenant. And God tells Israel, listen, if you, if you obey my word, if you keep my commandments, if you follow my, my, my commandments, the sickness, the pain, the disease that I sent over to Egypt is not going to come upon you. Because I am your God that healeth me. So praise the name of Jesus. Now the same covenant that God made with Israel. Listen, you see, today we're the church. We are the body of Christ. So the same benefits, the same covenant that God made with the nation of Israel, that same covenant of healing is for us, the church, today. Would somebody give Jesus the honor, the praise, and the glory praise God. Now, 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 we need to understand that because of our fallen nature, because of the sins of our fathers, our Adam and Eve, the Bible says that all, all have sinned, praise God, and, 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 and because of their sins, praise God, the Bible says that, that, that death entered into the world because of one sin. Praise God. So, so, so we're all under a fallen nature. And because we're all, all under a fallen nature, praise God, listen, we're susceptible to sickness and disease. Praise God, I came home from the mission field, I was gone for about 13 days, I come home, I, 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 I did a COVID test twice, just to make sure, just so that I can kiss Sister Patty, praise God. She said, no, no, you test twice. I says, okay. And I tested twice, and twice I was, I was clean. I was thanking it, praise God. And then my daughter came over with the grandkids and stuff, and, 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 and one of the nights, my, 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 my grandson, Judah, uh, wants to sleep with Grandpa, praise God. And I wake up in the morning, and I'm not feeling it. I says, I think Judah got me sick. And then my dad, or my, 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 my daughter presented me. She was, Dad, you, should, you ought to take the COVID test. I said, I already did, I'm good. She goes, no, 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 you ought to take the COVID test. And she forces me, and she, and she makes me take the COVID test. She goes, Dad, you're positive. I, says, I said to her, stop lying. She says, Dad, look, you're positive. And I'm like, I'm positive. And my wife says, go upstairs. <laughs> Start your quarantine. Now, 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 we're the church. We're under a covenant. 
Now, in the book of Exodus, God tells Israel, listen, if you hearken to my voice, if you obey my word, I will not bring the sickness, the disease that I have sent over Egypt, the world. Now, let me ask you a question. Why does that verse, verse 26, why does it end with this phrase, for I am the Lord? Somebody help me. That healed it. I'm going to tell you why. Because we're susceptible to sickness and disease. So what is that God is saying? Listen, if you get sick, I'm your healer. Because you're under a fallen nature. Because you live in a world of sin. If you get sick, I have a covenant with you. I am your Lord. Somebody help me. That kill it be. Somebody praise the name of Jesus. I told the church on Thursday, praise God. Uh, I mean, I went into that room and I'm like, I guess I do have COVID. But I couldn't come back out. Then my daughter and Pastor Tim, the kids, were leaving. I said, yeah, you better go home. And I was just forgetting myself. And, and listen, at nighttime, I got shivers in my body. I never, I never felt that before. I begin uh, 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 to build a, 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 a fever. I, I, I knew it was hot outside, but I'm freezing in the room. I got this big blanket and, and I covered myself and I'm sitting there on, 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 a, on a couch and I'm thinking, Lord, what are you trying to teach me? Because I just wrote a lesson on you. I just, I just preached about healing, and, and I, I, I just saw all these miracles out in, 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 in the mission field, and, and look at me, I'm, I'm sick. I've got COVID. And then the Holy Ghost began to speak to me. And I called my wife because, you know, she couldn't see each other. And I called her, I said, hey, babe. I said, I want you to prepare communion for me. I want you to prepare for me, Santa said, I want, you to, I want you to prepare communion for me. Because listen, when Jesus gathered his disciples and Jesus told them, eat of my flesh. We need to understand what, 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 what Jesus did. The prophet Isaiah, he prophesied 700 years before Jesus coming, before the incarnation, for he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. What was Isaiah saying? Listen, every sickness, every pain, every disease that, 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 that can come upon your body, Jesus came and he took it out and he took it out of his body and he laid it upon the cross. So I told Sister Patty, make, prepare for the communion. I said, because tomorrow morning, Tuesday morning, tomorrow morning, I'm going to take communion. And then she asked me, can I take communion with you? I said, well, not with me, baby. You do it downstairs. Praise God. I sat alone. Sister Patty brought me the bread. And, 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 and uh, the juice or the wine that represents the blood of Jesus. And, and I mean, I've never had communion alone. Well, I've never had communion alone. But I've never had communion, Sister Naomi, the way I had it that day. Because it was personal, it was intimate. And I was one on one with Jesus. And I said, Lord, I'm taking this bread that represents your blood. And I am putting this COVID on your body. And I'm going to drink of this cup that represents your blood. And I am going to be clean from sickness. Yes, amen. Somebody praise the name of Jesus. And I'll tell you 
tell you, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Praise God. The very moment that I took communion alone with Jesus, I ate of that of his flesh. And I drank of this blood. I say this in the presence of God. I felt a cleansing inside. And never again fever came. And from that day forward, I was, Sister Patty, can I come out there? No, nope, not yet. <laughs> but I'm being Sister Patty, well, not yet, just wait. <laughs> Somebody praise the name of Jesus. Somebody magnify Jesus. No, no, no. Listen, it's a covenant, it's a promise. Listen, it's a check that's already made up for you. And it has your name. Are you hearing me? It's a promise. It's a covenant. I'm, I'm going to share with you three keys, three Three principles for you to receive healing in your body. In fact, last night, I, 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 I think I showed you, Sister Patty, last night, my, my, my daughter, uh, she sent me a picture. I was preaching for their church, I think it was last night. And I was, every time I go to their church, I, I was hoping to minister healing. I can't preach nothing else but healing when I go to the highest praise. Praise God. And uh, uh, my daughter, Janelle, and, 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 and Pastor Tim, they were, I think they were walking the kids or something, and, and there was a gentleman outside watering the lawn, and, and you know, Tim, Tim is a talk. He began to talk to the man and invited him to church, and long story short, the man came to the house of God, and got the Holy Ghost, got baptized, praise God. But when I was there that, that, that Sunday, when I was there that Sunday, uh, 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 I called him out. I called him out. I called him out because uh, uh, there was, he, had, he had a situation with his heart and he was going to have open heart surgery. And I called him out and I just began to talk to him. I said, listen, the reason God called you is because God's going to heal you. And I began to you know, talk with him, joke with him before I ministered to him because I wanted him to open up. But I talked to him and I, and I told him, I said, look, you're not going you're, you're to need that surgery. Because God's going to heal it. Sister Patty was there. I released, I released the word of faith and he was instantly healed. I got a message yesterday from my daughter Janelle and, and his picture. Went to the doctor. The doctor says, you don't need the surgery. I don't know what happened, but you're good. Wow. Wow. Listen, listen, listen. Why was he healed? Why was he healed? You see, the moment you're baptized in Jesus' name, you come under the covenant of healing. Yes, amen. Tell your neighbor it's yours. Tell your neighbor healing belongs to you. It's a covenant. Let me give you three important steps to receive healing in your mind. And, and, and maybe it's not you, maybe it's somebody else that you know, but, and, 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 but you can share this word with them. Now, number one, the very first step that we need to understand is that physical healing begins here. It begins with inner healing. In other words, you cannot receive physical healing, hear me, if you're in the body of Christ, until you receive inner healing. You see, God is more interested in healing the, the, the pain of the heart. The resentment, the hate. The anger. You see, before God can bring healing, physical healing into your body, God needs to heal the heart. Because inner healing, hear me, it's the healing of the soul. Let's go to Matthew chapter 9. And let's begin with verse number 2. Let's go to Matthew chapter 9. And, and, and if, you, if, you, if you read verse number 1, the Bible simply just says there in verse number 1 that Jesus had come back to his house or to his hometown. Okay, now, 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 he comes back home, he comes back to his people, okay, who were his people? The Jews. 
Now, let's look at uh, verse number two. And behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy. What does that mean? He was paralyzed. Lying on a bed, and Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer. Somebody read. Your sins are forgiven. Now, 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 now. Why would Jesus tell a man that is paralyzed, they bring him on the bed, he's helpless, he can't move. Uh, he, I mean, he needs a physical miracle. But why would Jesus Tell the man, your sins are forgiven. Because listen, before we can receive physical healing, God wants to give us inner healing. Are you hearing me? He was looking at the condition of the heart. Now, 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 the Bible doesn't tell us much about the man, simply that he was sick of palsy. He was paralyzed. But Jesus, who discerns the thoughts and the heart of man, he talks to the heart and he tells him, your sins are forgiven. Because see, he, he needs to deal with the anger. He needs to deal with the bitterness. He needs to deal with the resentment. With the insecurities. With the most of the sin. Somebody praise the name of Jesus. Verse number three. And behold, certain of the scribes <laughs> said within themselves, This that blasphemous. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think you evil in your hearts? For whether is easier, what's easier? To say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and walk. Listen, listen, listen. You see, Jesus is, see, he's asking a question of priority. What's more important? Is it the healing of the heart or is it the healing of the body? Let me tell you, the greatest miracle that you can receive is the forgiveness of your sins. The greatest miracle that a person can receive, praise God, is the salvation of his heart, the salvation of his soul. Somebody praise the name of Jesus. Verse number six, but that you may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth, listen, to forgive sins, to heal the heart, to, to heal the inner man. Then saith he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up your bed and go unto thy house. And he arose and departed to his house. But when, when the multitude saw it, they marveled, they glorified God. Somebody praise the name of Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. So the very first step, listen. Listen, the healing of the heart. The healing of the heart. Number two, number two, number two. If you want to be, re receive healing in your body, praise God, we need to release forgiveness to those who have offended us. Yes. We need to release forgiveness. Listen, you can't come to the presence of God with anger and hatred and, and, and expect to receive. If there's anger, if there's hatred in your heart, we have to release forgiveness. Let's go to Matthew chapter 6, verse number 14. For if we forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Somebody praise the name of Jesus. Release forgiveness. Brings healing to the, 
to the heart that prepares you, listen, to receive healing in your body. Somebody praise the name of Jesus. Number three. Number three. This is so powerful. This is a connection with, 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 with the covenant that God made with Israel in the book of Deuteronomy. Number three, we need to confess our sins, our faults, before the presence of Almighty God. Praise God. Let's go to jump up to the, uh, James chapter number five. The book of James, chapter 5 and verse number 14. We'll read all the way to verse number 16. Now listen, this is powerful. Because this is, we're talking about ministering healing to the church. We're talking about ministering healing to the body of Christ. And in the Old Testament, God makes a covenant with Israel. And now the covenant that God made to Israel, he makes it to the body of Christ, which is the church. I want you to notice the reading of James chapter 5, verse number 14. Praise God. Can somebody read it for me, please? Amen. Brother Walter, do you have it? Now, he starts with a question. And he said to you. Wait, wait, wait. You see, the question, the question that we need to ask ourselves, who is James writing to? He's not writing to the world, he's writing to the church. So he's asking the church. Somebody say with me, the church. Is there any sin among you? Now, 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 look, let's put this into context. Uh, 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 I cannot get this verse and use it for a crusade because he's talking to the church this is not evangelism this is the church this is the body of Christ this is the family of God and he's telling the church he's asking the question is there any sick among you let what let him let the sick call for the elders of the church I want you to understand the, the, the structure here. The order that, 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 that James is using. If you're sick, don't wait for pastor to call you. You call pastor. You need healing. Well, I'm not going to go to church no more because I got sick and pastor didn't call me. Read the Bible. Get in order with the word of God. Hello? Get in order. I had somebody call me the other day. You know, I, 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 can I transfer to your church? I said, why would you want to be that great church? Why would you want to be that great man of God that you're under? Well, it's just that, you know, he said, call me. And I said, oh, wait, 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 wait. Let's put this in order. And, and I took him to James. I says, and, and, and who's supposed to call? He says, okay, I got it. I says, yeah, stay in your church. Praise the Lord. Now, 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 now listen, listen, listen. He's writing to who? To the church. He's talking to the church. And he's telling the church, you call your man of God. And you have your man of God do what? Pray. Somebody help me. Read. Anointing them with Now we need to understand, this is powerful. When I was a missionary in South America, I, I told the church the other day, uh, the brothers, some of the pastors in South, in South America, because they understand Bible, they will not, they will not uh, anoint people who are not baptized with oil, because they're, they're so convicted that this scripture only belongs to the church. Are you hearing me? Because listen, it puts your relationship. This is like taking communion. It's only for the church. It's only for the church because you're 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 you're, you're taking communion with the body of Christ, with the head of the body, which is Christ and the and the church. We're talking about receiving healing. 
You see, God is a God of hope. Somebody praise the name of Jesus. And let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith, somebody help me, shall shake the sick and the Lord shall raise them up. And if he has committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. A double healing, the healing of the soul, the healing of the heart, the healing of the body. Somebody praise the name of Jesus. Verse number 16. Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. When was the last time you had somebody come to you and say, Would you, can I sit with you? Can I, can, can I confess my, my faults to you? You know, you know what James is talking about? The weaknesses. Confess your temptations. And have your brother pray for you. Can you be Somebody praise the name of Jesus. Would you stand to your feet and magnify Jesus? Listen, listen. Healing belongs to the body of Christ. Healing belongs to the church. I left, I left uh, 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 London. I'm, 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 the Lord, I'm, I'm on that plane and I'm in tears. And the Lord began to speak to me. And the Lord told me, I want you to tell my people that he will be to them. And the Lord, the Lord began to speak to me. The Lord told me, I'm, 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 you're going to see much more of this in your ministry. Praise God. Because listen, listen. It's a covenant. It's a covenant. It's a promise. It's our right to be healed. To be healed. Is there anybody that, that needs healing in their body here today? I'm going to ask you to come to this altar. I'm going to ask you to come to this altar. Is there anyone here today that needs healing in their body? I'm going to 